guys, welcome to another episode of Get Up 10. I'm super excited for today's episode, but before we get into it, housekeeping, or is it house cleaning? I don't know, but um, I want to just talk about a few things before we jump into this awesome interview with my big brother. So, last week, I was going to do an episode for consistency's sake, and I had an idea, and I wanted to just do a refresher on the purpose of Get Up 10 podcast, like why I created it and what's the vision for it, because I know I can be a little all over the place sometimes, but I want to remind you guys of the purpose of Get Up 10 every now and then so that it's clear what my motives or my mission is at the end of the day. And so I created Get Up 10 podcast to remind you that you can get up from anything that life throws at you. Um, Life is going to throw some curveballs your way, throw some punches your way, however you want to, whatever you want to call the trials of life. But I want to encourage you to keep on getting up every single time. And I will share my story and my experiences, but I know that you might not be able to resonate with everything that I say. And so for that reason, I do interviews. And so I did a couple interviews earlier in 2020 with some of my awesome sister friends. And if you haven't heard those, I encourage you to go back and check them out. I talked about, well, I didn't talk about, (laughs) my guests shared their stories, which ranged from growing up with addict parents and losing them at a young age to growing up in the inner city and dreaming big to getting let go from your job and starting your entrepreneurial journey and also losing your twin sister to cancer and having to figure out how to get up from that and so those are some of the things that we talked about back in I think April or 2020 or so And so if you haven't heard any of those episodes, but they resonated or interested you, definitely go check them out. But after I did those interviews, it had me thinking, like, I am definitely all about encouraging and empowering and, like, just giving credit where credit is due to some dope woman. But at the same time, I have a lot of really awesome guys in my life, and so I wanted to showcase and highlight them as well. And so that's what I'm about to do over these next couple of weeks. Um, The other reason I created Get Up 10 is because it was inspired by Cardi B's song, Get Up 10, which says, uh, look at myself in the mirror, I said, we gon' win, knock me down nine times, but I get up 10. (laughs) I had to think about those lyrics a little bit. But the other reason I named my podcast after Cardi B's song is because I watched Cardi B's of... not transition (laughs) I watched her come up that's the way I watched her come up from the stripper that was just always on Instagram posting and like talking her stuff to what we know her as today that like musical whatever you want to call her with all this money and just living living lavish doing it big like she bet Beyonce's mom okay levels <laughs> and so I've watched the the I don't want to say transition even though that is the proper word but the, the come up the trajectory I don't know y'all I really always want to use the perfect word and so that's why I trip over my words sometimes because sometimes I'm like that's not the word or I'll try to say like two words at once and like it's just a thing that I do but anyways I watched that and I was inspired by how she was able to be so successful while also remaining true to herself, her, uh, not just herself, like her authentic self, her raw self, whether she had, like, her wig was just laid and looking perfect, or she got the cornrows in, she looking a little nappy, the teeth is crooked, or they're done, or makeup, no makeup, like, just whatever, um, she wasn't afraid to show herself to the world in whatever state that she was wherever she was and I had a lot of respect for that and I think it just show goes to show and prove that you can be successful by just being yourself there's so many people out here trying to be like other people but that is a disservice to your creator and to who you were created to be and so I wanted to create a podcast not only to encourage you to get back up from whatever life throws your way but also to encourage you 
to be true to yourself, to show up as who you really are, good, bad, ugly, a mess, put together, whatever it is on whatever day, like, I wanted to encourage you to show up as that person, because that is an act of worship in a way, and worship is a lifestyle, but anyway, that's a whole nother topic, um, but yeah, when you are your truest self, like, that is, there's something anointed about that, and so I wanted to encourage that, uh, within my listeners, but anyways, yeah, so, like, last week, I created an episode pretty much saying this, and then I realized that I said all I had to say in, like, two minutes, and so I'm like, I'm not about to put out a two-minute episode with the intro and outro music, like, that's not even an episode, so I was like, you know what, it's fine, I can skip this week, which I'm trying to be consistent, but at the same time, quality over quantity, you know? So forgive me for not putting an episode out last week, but we're here this week and I'm going to give you more than the two minute episodes you would have gotten last week. So like I said, we're going to transition to an interview series with uh, some of the guys in my life. And I'm starting off with my big brother, Chris Hall, and I'm super excited to share him with you guys. So right now it's three o'clock in the morning and uh, I'm just chilling, honestly. I'm doing a little painting that my sister got me for Christmas. I'm listening to a T.D. Jake sermon, and um, he's talking about the perspective of the Israelites, I think it is, after they came out of captivity, and how it just represents so much. Uh, And that immediately made me think of Chris and his story that he's going to share with you guys, because uh, let me pull up his bio really quick for you guys and I'm about to definitely add some ginger flavor onto this bio but anyways uh in on April 12th 2008 Chris was in a car accident which changed his life forever um he became a below the knee amputee and spent two months in the hospital and so Honestly, I just got distracted by my daughter's baby monitor. (laughs) But anyways, Chris spent two years in the hospital. Two years. Oh, my gosh. Y'all, let me focus. I'm over here making up my my brother's life. He spent two months in the hospital uh, after this below-the-knee amputation and was sent home to recover. And um, you'll, you'll, you'll hear in the interview, like, he has so much joy and his gratitude and perspective on life is just beautiful and a lot of people that would have been in his same situation would not have the joy that he has and in the same way it's like the things that we're faced with in life you can react two ways and td jakes was just saying this in the sermon i was listening to he's like talking about coronavirus and how some people are in shambles and they're like oh my gosh like what is life and some people are rejoicing and making the most of it and so it's like I posed to you that question of, like, who are you going to be? Are you going to be that person that is stuck in the past and what was? Are you going to be that person that's able to move forward and celebrate the new thing that is taking place? But anyways, back to my brother Chris. Had an accident, low the knee amputation, uh, two months in the hospital. Despite the accident, I don't want to give too much of his story away, but despite the accident, he uh, finished school, graduated with a degree, and... Fast forward 10 years later to 2019, he started his entrepreneurial career where after leaving a 10-year career as a counselor, he began his journey as a photographer in Brooklyn, New York, and plug, he travels, okay, book him, he's dope. Anyways, um, yeah, and so he's been doing photography, his photography business now for a couple of years, and he believes a, a photograph always has a story behind it, a loving moment captured to last a lifetime to be passed down from generation to generation. He is self-taught, self-made, and uh, he has an attention for detail and a compassion for others, which has earned him the honor of providing his models with amazing photography experience. One thing remains consistent about Chris, he excels at coaching. Not only is he committed to motivating others to reach their goals and aspirations, but he leads from a place of authenticity. There is no one else like him. And even though I just read that, I I can validate that. I, I agree with that. And it's so funny because I don't think about my big brother as a coach, but 
I definitely see that in him and it makes sense. But anyways, enough of me and this long intro. Without further ado, uh, let's get into this interview with my big brother, Chris, and I hope that y'all are blessed by his spirit. Hey guys, I'm coming to you live right now with my big brother, Chris. <laughs> hey, hey guys. <laughs> hey. <laughs> um, how are you today? I'm doing amazing today. I had a quick photo shoot, so I'm doing good. Nice. Yeah, so it's Monday. So I was reading an article in my email and it was like, it's Monday, so we don't have much news to report yet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's how you feel about your day or your week so far. Oh, Mondays are just, they just start the, start the week, start everybody on a nice fresh start. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I'm like in this lazy season of my life. I'm like, uh, all the days feel the same. But we're getting this interview done. So I'm happy about that. And I'm really, so you're going to be the first, uh, interview 2021 yeah. yes well 2021 and also like I mean, this is a new series with my guy friends because I did a couple of interviews with my girlfriends but I was like I really mm-hmm. want to bring the guys on the podcast too because I know like a lot of amazing guys and you gotta switch it up and give something give something new to the people <laughs> absolutely thank you well, I appreciate it yeah thank you for being here so you're my first my first one um uh, Yeah, so the purpose of me doing interviews is because Get Up 10 is all about showing people that you can get up from anything in life. And of course, I share my story on here, but you know, my story is limited and your story might resonate with somebody else. Oh, hold up, you just changed your picture on Zoom. Got distracted (laughs) here. (laughs) That is a fire picture. Anyway, (laughs) focusing, focusing uh yeah so like my story is can reach only but so many people but your story has the ability to reach like so many more people and so that's why I love bringing these interviews on it's also I mean bringing these interviews on (laughs) bringing doing these interviews and it's also like me bragging on my friends because I got a lot of dope friends (laughs) amazing thank you I'm always appreciative and yes you do have a lot of dope friends yes God, it's good. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get into it. So these questions are kind of broad, but I did it on purpose because I want you to answer them however you feel led to answer them because I know because I know the quality of person that you are, that whatever you say is going to be good. So oh, I like I to start that. with how has life knocked you down? Mm, that's such a good question. I feel life has knocked, well, I would say how it has been perceived life has knocked me down for me for in the sense that about, I want to say now what, more than 10 years ago, I lost my right leg in a a car accident with my friend in college, my junior year of college. And that was probably the, one of the biggest turning points in my life. I was in hospital for about a month, two months after the accident. And he just fell asleep at the wheel. It wasn't a situation of anything anybody couldn't control. So I think that accident has increased my faith with God in a sense, because after waking up, I forgave him right away. That's the first thing, because I would never want that on any, anybody's heart. But also one of the first things that I said when I woke up was because I saw my dad there and I was like, oh, where's my mom? And uh, where are my grades? Because I knew I was working for a very high GPA that semester. Mm-hmm. Are you still there? Are you yes. Dramatic yeah, pause? Okay. Dramatic pause. <laughs> <laughs> So where were your grades? Where was your- <laughs> I'm like, where oh, you- <laughs> oh, cliffhanger, cliffhanger. Yeah, okay. I was like- <laughs> um, well, the grades were the grades were okay. I know one professor did not uh, give me the grade that I wanted, but when I did, in a sense, like I said, woke up. I was just grateful. I I never had a day of where I felt depressed or sad that I lost my leg. 
And I just literally, I, I would say I smiled more and just was grateful that I was able to, you know, keep my mind, keep my arms, the things that I did have, uh, I was very grateful for. And I thank God each day because it seems like me just being myself after getting the leg, my prosthetic leg, I got it a year later. So I was on campus for about, I went back to school that semester, my senior year. My mom did not want me to go back, but that's fine. Uh, I, it, it Sometimes I don't follow what others feel may be best. I'd rather try it and then go about it my way. So I went back to school and I'm grateful that I went back to school because that semester is where I met my now wife. And it, I feel everything always aligns when you put faith first. And I'm definitely a person who walks by faith. And after that year, it's just been on the rise for me. I've just been doing everything to either encourage others or just help others get past any situation they are going through, not in a sense of dismissing their sadness or depression, but just there's usually a, a silver lining or something that you could look forward to and be grateful for. Yeah, and just from knowing you for a couple of years now, like your joy for life and just, yeah, for life, it definitely stands out. Like you are probably, you are definitely one of the happiest people I know. <laughs> And it's, just, it's crazy because a lot of people in your same situation definitely would not have handled it like you did. So what were some of the keys to you, quote unquote, getting back up? Like, what helped you to bounce back from that? I think you touched on it a little bit, but if you could go deeper into oh, it. Absolutely. Uh, my father, and it's, it's so crazy, his birthday was yesterday. Uh, happy birthday. Yes, happy birthday, now he Pop. Has <laughs> and my mom was gonna make him listen regardless but <laughs> he actually stayed by me every single day in the hospital like he never left he I remember he told me the first day or the second day the nurse was telling him you know oh you could go home now he said oh I'm not leaving and he never left he sat there by me every time I went to sleep every time I woke up and he just never left my side and I am super grateful for him because he showed me what family is in that sense, because you just stick by family, especially when they're going through something. He knew I was okay. And that was the crazy part. I found out years later that when they did get the call that I was in the car accident, that he was, he drove, you know, very fast to get to the hospital and everything, but at the hospital, Everybody was, meaning my mom and my cousin and friends were very frantic. He was like, Chris is going to be okay. He's, he just knew. I don't know how, but he just knew I was going to be fine mentally. And I was. And it could be because he put that faith in the atmosphere that my son is going to be okay. And he must have knew that he wasn't going to leave my side. And I don't think everybody has someone like that in their life so I'm very very grateful that he is the man who he is very strong man he himself uh, battled um, colon cancer before while I was in my freshman year of college and the one thing I know he wanted when he was battling that was he just wanted to see his kids graduate and um, family have their grandkids. He just wanted to be a grandfather. And he battled that with the guidance of my mother. And he is now fully recovered. So yeah, I love my dad. <laughs> That's beautiful. I love that he just like knew like he can be a guy. That's definitely <laughs> like another level of faith right there. Mm -hmm. that is inspiring for sure I was kind of thinking like while you're speaking and I was like so I don't know like who do you think you would be if you didn't go through that <laughs> I think I, you, I don't know. Even know. you ever think about that or like 
I actually do. I always, <laughs> I always tell my wife I play with her. I'm like, you need to be lucky. I lost my leg, girl. You would have never met me. And <laughs> <laughs> So I'm very, very playful with my leg. I don't let it just be like, oh, this is uh, something that it, it's just an addition. It's so funny because during the winter times and everything, some people don't even remember that I have a prosthetic leg. And I, I just don't know how it would be. I know I, I would still be grateful, but I don't know if it would be on this level of uh, gratefulness and appreciation for life. And I'm, I'm, I would not, the craziest thing, I wouldn't change the situation at all because uh, it wasn't just me and one friend in the car. It was me and uh, four other, three other friends. And the, the way, this is why I have such a strong faith in God, the way the accident went, it couldn't, it couldn't have went any other way without us all walking away like the driver fell asleep it hit the he hit the right guard rail he woke up briefly swerved over to the left hit the left guard rail and then the car spun and i'm asleep this whole time i only know this because of the police report and the things that friends told me but then the car spun after it hit the left side two of the friends who were asleep in the back flew out the back and then one friend was still in there and the driver was still in the car and I was still in the car. I'm the only one who had my seatbelt on and he held, uh, he was, you know, holding on for dear life in the back, but he's the only one who was awake. And then the car stopped with the four, at a four lane highway, Atlantic City Expressway and the car hit my side. And then that's when the person in the front seat the driver seat um, flew out and that's when it uh, crushed my leg. And I call it like the perfect accident because the one who, flew, the two who flew out the back at first, one broke his nose. Uh, that's it. That was his main injury and a couple scratches. One hurt his neck. He hurt certain parts on his spine but he wasn't um paralyzed or anything because he was very smart i say because he held his head like in, if it was his hands he used it as like a cast for his neck and held his head up and they said because he did that he was not paralyzed uh the driver um even though he flew out the windshield he was okay he had to have some he broke some ribs and had some scars and i always say uh, I just lost my leg. And when people hear that, they're like, what the heck is wrong with you? And I'm just like, because everything else was okay with me. You know, I could still laugh, joke, speak, um, run. I ran a, a New York City marathon a few years ago. And it's just, and I still play basketball if I choose to. A little older now, but I, if I choose to. And I just don't think anything could, has to limit you. So I'm very actually grateful for me actually losing it because the people who I've met in my life, I might not have even met you. That would be tragic right there. Wow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I completely agree. Wow. Every time I hear about accidents or even like just like drive past my like, like goosebumps. Ooh, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, it's scary. But wow. Yeah. And then I was thinking about how you said like the perfect accident because I was thinking about that word perfect and like do we use it in the right sense or like do we overuse it? Do we need to use it less? Is perfect real? Like but in that I case think I, I think I, I call it perfect because it. everybody lived. That's for oh, me. Yeah, it definitely fits there. Mm hmm It was the perfect accident. Crazy. Um, all right, so transitioning a little bit. Part of the reason I named my podcast after Cardi B, well, Cardi B's song, Get Up Time, um, was also because I watched, in the beginning, I'm not going to lie, I don't follow Cardi B anymore, but <laughs> in the beginning, when I was, like, in college, that was when she was just like famous on Instagram and then shortly after that that's when she came to love and hip-hop and then shortly after that that's when she became 
what she is now. So I kind of watched her progress, I guess you could say. And it just touched me how, how like authentic she was. She never had a filter. She was just herself, whether she was looking crazy or like makeup then, like doing big things. Either way, she always brought her real and true self to yeah. people. And I really admired that. And so I like to ask people, like, what does it look like to you to live life with no filter or just like authentically be you? Like, how does that look for you? Man, this is me every day. <laughs> That's what I always say to people. I'm just Chris, man. I I don't, I'm not going to say I don't hold my tongue for anything, but if something's not right, I'm going to say it. And if something, if I need to ask a question or anything, I'm okay with not knowing something. Like if I don't know, like if you said a word and I'm like, what does that mean? I'll say it right now. Like I'm not afraid to look, well, others would be like, oh, well, you look dumb asking that question. I don't think it's dumb. I think I'm a very inquisitive person and I just sometimes just want to know. And I, I I just live it. And it's so crazy that you say that living your life, you know, without any filters, because I've met people who who do live their life with filters. I met a gentleman probably early in my stages of when I had a prostate leg and I wear in the summer, I wear it out. Like you're going to see all this metal. Oh, (laughs) and he was he, he I met him in a mall. And because of the way I was sitting, he knew I had a prostate leg. And then he was just like, well, no, but the way he was sitting, I knew he had a prostate leg. And I was just like, oh, um, why you got pants on? It's like 90 degrees. He was like, nah, man, you know, I don't show my leg. I'm, I'm, you know, fearful of that. And I was like, but he was like, I see you just showing it. I was like, yeah, like, I'm okay. uh, Like I'm half robot is what I tell kids. And, you know, if they're old enough, I'll tell them the story. I'll be like, oh, well, I was in a car accident. I won't go too in depth in it. But, and eventually he actually, he followed me on Facebook and then he started wearing his leg out. And I was just so happy and grateful. And he said that he did it because he saw me so free like that so I think it's just it's just better to live your life without those limitations of filters like just just be I'm not saying go crazy but just be you (laughs) I love that because (laughs) with you being comfortable with yourself you like see somebody else have to do the same and I think that's part of what being yourself does for other people and like I said like the whole reason that I ask these questions is because I want other people to see like it's not just you and so I think that was like the perfect answer and okay so that was the more serious stuff now we transition (laughs) to the more fun stuff this is all fun to me (laughs) (laughs) I know I love it I love doing it um I might switch up my questions soon because so the last time I did interviews was in like April of 2020 Mm -hmm. so been some time but, a, little, a little gap, but now you're ready to kill it. Be consistent all 2021. Yes, definitely be <laughs> consistent, but I might switch these questions later. But for now, we'll go with them. Um, I'm, I'm still like trying to think in my head of how consistent I want to be because last year I finally reached this big goal of doing 10 episodes in a row, which mm. I was super proud of myself for. So now I'm just like, all right, so do you want to like do 10 again? Like, do we want to just see how far we can go? Like, do we want to do an episode every week? Gosh, I don't know if I want to. I know I'm still trying to decide. <laughs> but I know with, um, so I already have an interview for tomorrow, which will be January 12th. That would just be an introduction to this series. And then you'll be the first episode of the series. And then I got three other awesome people that I plan on interviewing. So that's like five, five weeks right there. Boom. Let's go. Make it happen. <laughs> I have no, I have no doubt in you. Full faith. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So these are supposed to be the fun questions. I don't know how fun they are. Uh, actually, I think they are fun because, well, I feel like anything that you do is fun. Because so. <laughs> <laughs> that's just who you are as a person. But um, so what song do you have on repeat right now? It's your go-to song. Do I have a go-to song on repeat? Yes. Well, I don't know. That's kind of redundant, but 
you know no 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 i do have a song on repeat uh hold on i have a i have a bebonic playlist (laughs) oh that playlist yeah so anytime i need to get hype i have a playlist uh his name is chronix and it's called i can i listen to that song probably three four times a day i love 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 that song it's just a the video everything about it so i love that song it sounds good it's making me think of nas which the uh, it's, it's a nice. different vibe his is i, I know i can't yeah it's a whole different vibe please listen to it today i'm actually gonna share it to you right now <laughs> yes please do <laughs> no the nas version or not version but like nas is song is one of my songs for a while now and i just play that song but anyways, it's not about me, it's about you. And <laughs> the next question is about traveling, which it's so funny because when I asked these questions, originally we were like in the middle of a pandemic. Now we're still in a pandemic, but it's like not as crazy. But like, I'm still going to preface it and say, just like, let's pretend that traveling is safe right now and you're not mm-hmm. worried about the coronavirus. Where are you going? Man, I'm going to... Jamaica I oh enjoy the island I've been yes I've been twice I would yeah. want to go three times it's just a beautiful island I love the beach I love the heat I know I'm a New Yorker but I, that's why I love New Yorkers we're built for every season but I love <laughs> I love the beach I'll take the yeah. summer any day I just always think about uh when we were at our friend Michelle's house in oh the resort it. Yes, I call it the resort. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> yes, this uh, is the day, Michelle's yes. house. Michelle and Ari, beautiful, beautiful home. Yes, and you were telling your story that day, and you were talking about, I think you were talking about your trip to Jamaica a little bit. I had that in the back of my mind, so then when you said it, I was like, oh, no way. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I gotta do. I gotta do some things. Me and my wife. She wants to jump off of uh, Rick's Cafe at the Grill, so I want to do yeah. it again. That's right. I was like, "Have you done that?" I felt. I thought you had done that. I so did. Do it. Yep. So she got to do it with me now. <laughs> nice. Okay. And the last question is a book recommendation. So mm. that could be something that you're like reading through right now, or like something that you read in the past that was just really impactful either or i know i still haven't finished the whole book but it's on my nightstand and i look at it and i glance through it each and every day i don't read books traditionally i go by literally whatever chapter i feel i need right now and then i will read that chapter but the book i really really enjoy right now is called the magic of thinking big and it's by David Squirts. He's well, Dr. David Squirts. And it's a good book. It's that a very good. good book. I love the title. The title got me. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. title got me because, you know, sometimes being an entrepreneur or just being living through life, you don't, we think so small instead of thinking big, thinking bigger, because if we think bigger and then quote unquote, we don't reach it, we still got somewhere close to it. And if we do think bigger and then we do get it, that's even more to be happy about. So true. I like that. I'll look into it. <laughs> I have been like listening to uh, books on Audible, but mm-hmm. I kind of, I don't know, like I, in my head, I'm like, oh, I want to read physical books again, but I don't know, especially since I'm off social media right now, I feel like I have the time for it since I'm not spending six hours on Instagram and three mm. hours on Clubhouse. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but definitely Audible is my go-to, and so I love getting suggestions uh, from people. Yes, I love Audible, too, because when you're driving, you can listen to it. But then I'm so bad because I'd be ready to pull over to 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 record or or stop that quote that they just did i'm like oh i, I can't <laughs> drive and listen to this i think you can make bookmarks and then come back i to know it later. i know quick bookmarks and i'll just be ready to just pull over <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny uh, okay so that's it do you have any uh closing remarks or any uh last thoughts that you want to share with the people 
yes, I want to say thank you, first of all, for uh, even wanting to interview me. I definitely, definitely appreciate you and definitely hope you continue to just be the joy. You you are definitely the, I always say, remember the ginger effect. Like you just have an <laughs> effect on people where you leave lasting impressions. So you just continue to be you. I want to say thank you that, for that. And just to your listeners, just keep pushing each day. Uh, my quote is always going to be impossible is nothing. You can do anything you put your mind to, no matter what age you are, no matter how far along you are in your career or not far along in your career, you can do whatever you put your mind to. Yes. Amen. I even want to say amen all the time. I don't know Look, if that's true. Am, am, like, amen is amen. perfect. Amen. <laughs> That's the closer. <laughs> Amen. Drop the mic, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. And I can't wait to uh, put this episode out. Absolutely. All right, Ginger. <laughs>